There's been a hot debate in the Destiny 2 PvP community over the past month or so about where special ammo greedy launchers fit into the current meta. Some players claim that they are super easy and effective with basically no skill requirement, while others believe they have an incredible gap of skill to be explored and mastered. During a recent episode of the DCP Firing Range podcast, a Bungie developer shared that a potential design goal of these grenade launchers was to provide a skill shot similar to that of the grenade launcher from Halo Reach. I've historically hated these grenade launchers in PvP. Their ability to hit targets for potentially enough damage to one-shot kill around a corner, along with the ability to apply status effects like concussion grenades and blinding grenades, has not been my favorite thing to play against to say the least. But honestly, aside from the occasional quest, I've almost never used these grenade launchers myself. So I wanted to give them a legitimate test in the Crucible and try to answer the question, are these weapons actually overpowered? So for the past week or so, I've been using what I consider to be one of the strongest and most annoying setups to play against currently in Destiny 2, the Dead Man's Tail Exotic Scout Rifle, or DMT for short, and a breech-loaded grenade launcher, in my case, the Truth Teller. It took me a day or so to start understanding how and when to use the grenade launcher, but after a bit of practice, I'm pretty confident saying that this combo might be the most powerful PvP build in all of Destiny 2 right now. This past weekend, I was able to go flawless in Trials of Osiris using this build, and I was pretty blown away by the utility and sheer damage output potential of this loadout. Let's talk about the weapons first, and then I'll explain which classes and subclasses I think can be used most effectively with this weapon pairing. For the grenade launcher, I was using the Truth Teller with proximity grenades, auto-loading holster, and disruption break. This particular set of perks works so well together. Let me quickly explain how these breech-loaded grenade launchers work in case you haven't used one in a while. When firing the projectile, you can hold down the fire button and then time when you release it so that the grenade explodes precisely when you want it to. There's a short arming period immediately after firing so you can't detonate the grenade in extreme close quarters, but after that window expires, you can precisely control when it explodes, even after it bounce. This combination of aiming the grenade trajectory and choosing when to detonate it are essentially the main skill gap of these types of grenade launchers. However, the perk proximity grenades basically shaves off a huge chunk of the skill gap because if you shoot the grenade close enough to an enemy, it will automatically explode without you needing to release the button and get the timing right or to land a direct hit. It does reduce the maximum damage a bit, which means that you can't pull off a one-hit kill unless you have some sort of a damage buff, but I think that's an okay compromise for the reasons that I'll explain in a second. Another major downside of grenade launchers is that they only have one grenade in the magazine, so to speak, so you need to perform a fairly lengthy reload animation to fire again under normal circumstances. Yet the perk auto-loading holster basically bypasses this requirement because you can have the grenade reloading in the background while your other weapon's out firing at enemies. Finally, the cherry on top of this grenade launcher is Disruption Break. When you deal enough damage with a grenade to break the enemy's shield, you and your teammates deal increased kinetic damage to the target. This is a pretty extreme damage boost. For example, Dead Man's Tail, which normally hits for 84 damage with a headshot, now deals 126 damage. If you have a teammate using a weapon like a kinetic SMG, for example, that weakened enemy is now very easy to finish off. That debuff lasts for 5 seconds, so even if your enemy starts to recover their health, that damage buff might allow you to still get a kill faster than usual. Fun fact by the way, Disruption Break can actually stack if you break the shield multiple times, like against a player in a healing rift for example. We were able to temporarily get up to 7 stacks while playing around with it, and the extra damage bonus is pretty crazy. Grenade launchers are almost perfectly designed for the mod Quick Access Sling, which allows you to swap to your other weapon incredibly fast after emptying the magazine. Since you basically will always be empty on the grenades after launching one, it's essentially like having the old version of Quick Draw for free. When choosing a primary weapon to pair with our grenade launcher, it's tough to pass up the exotic scout rifle, the Dead Man's Tail, which in my opinion is the strongest primary weapon in all of Destiny 2 at the moment. Listen to what my friend Wallace said recently in an interview on my channel. Uh, speaking of DMT, uh, I know they mentioned that they're probably going to be nerfing that soon, but do you feel like that's pretty, basically the best gun in the game, like primary? If, if you're not using, if you're not using DMT, you're not playing to win. Is is basically what I what I believe. yeah. I, it's just way too good. It's way better than any, any other option <laughs> right now. Dead Man's Tail is supposedly getting a well-deserved nerf soon, but for now, if you're trying to make the most powerful build possible, it's a pretty clear winner in my book. One of the reasons that this scout rifle is so incredibly strong is that it can roll with the perk Vorpal Weapon, which allows you to deal bonus damage against guardians in their super. In high stakes game modes like Trials of Osiris where the super economy often wins close games, a team loaded with Vorpal DMTs almost acts like a trump card against most roaming supers, just maybe not against the incredibly busted Chaos Reach. 
A Vorpal DMT can deal upwards of 60 plus damage per headshot against roaming supers, so a top tree Dawnblade for example can be quite easy to pick out of the sky. The Exotic Catalyst, which is essentially mandatory to power up DMT to its full potential, allows you to hip fire shots that deal full damage at 150 RPM instead of 120, while also not suffering the typical accuracy penalty of hip firing a weapon. This alone makes this gun in a league of its own. It has the time to kill of the old 150 RPM hand cannons, but with the forgiveness factor of 120 RPM hand cannons since it doesn't require 3 headshots for a kill. It can also easily 2-tap enemies from across the map if you have a damage bonus like an Empowering Rift, or from activating the perk Cranial Spike if you're hitting consecutive headshots. The crazy thing about this loadout is how well these two guns work together. You have essentially unlimited range with the DMT, as well as the ability to easily hipfire down opponents in close quarters. If you have some ammo for your grenade launcher, you can basically get a free hit even around corners for about 170 damage, making it a single body shot cleanup with the DMT, which you can do quite easily while spamming your hipfire shots. Plus, when you have the mod Quick Access Sling, you can swap from your GL to your DMT almost instantly, so the combination yields a ridiculously fast time to kill that is basically uncounterable if you get hit by both weapons. It's in the same league as hot swapping between something like Le Monarch and a hand cannon, or a kinetic bow and Ariana's Vow. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, maybe subscribe to the channel. It's free to do and you can always change your mind later. The one downside of the Dead Man's Tale is that you can't slot an Icarus mod since it's an exotic weapon, which means you'll typically struggle with inner accuracy. And that's where the subclass choice starts to round out this insane build. Top Tree Dawnblade, which is considered by most players to be the strongest subclass in all of Destiny 2 PvP, especially after the recent stasis nerfs, just happens to have Heat Rises, a perk that enables perfect in-air accuracy while you're floating around after consuming your grenade. It also has the best movement of any class thanks to Icarus Dash, which can have you rotating around the map at Mach 10 speed, and it also has the best charge melee in the game, Celestial Fire, which deals an insane amount of damage from across the map and can hit enemies around corners, just like your grenade launcher. Basically, you can hit someone hiding behind cover with your grenade launcher, and then send a Celestial Fire attack to finish the job instantly. This is insanely strong. If that wasn't enough, you also have Winged Sun, which both extends the timer on your Heat Rises perk, as well as recharging your Celestial Fire melee attack anytime you get kills while you're floating in the air. Which, again, will happen quite often thanks to your grenade launcher and perfect accuracy in the air with your Dead Man's Tail. Overall, this setup is just insanely powerful. I really think it's the strongest loadout in the entire game currently. To add gasoline to the fire, we also have some really powerful exotic armor choices available for Warlock. The Speedy Boy option, which has mostly been my go-to choice, are the transversive steps, which allow you to move faster and also auto-reload your equipped weapon while you're sprinting. This pairs great with both the Dead Man's Tail and your grenade launcher, especially if you don't happen to have one with the perk auto-loading holster. Aphidian Aspects are typically another good Warlock exotic, but in this particular case, I think it loses a lot of value since you're already swapping so fast from your grenade launcher to Dead Man's Tail thanks to the quick access sling mod, and you also never really have to aim down sights with either your grenade launcher or DMT. Another good option is the Starfire Protocol, which gives you an extra fusion grenade that you can use to activate your Heat Rises perk more often. This is super powerful thanks to the sheer utility of being able to fly high in the sky basically anytime you want while also retaining your accuracy but it does require you to swap from solar grenades over to fusion grenades to get the benefit, and I think that solar grenades are generally speaking a bit more useful for this build, especially since you're going to be often hitting people around corners with a grenade launcher, and you can throw a single solar grenade to finish them off without even ever seeing them. You also have an interesting choice with your rift. Healing rifts are always useful, especially in modes like Trials of Osiris that tend to have a lot of standstills. These rifts can allow you to stay more active in a fight instead of needing to back off and recover your health. Because of how many people have started using grenade launchers in PvP lately, you really need to be careful about slowly healing behind cover, and healing rifts might just save your life quite often. Empowering rifts though are also insanely powerful with this build for two main reasons. While standing in an empowering rift, your grenade launcher can one-shot kill an enemy even with proximity grenades thanks to the damage buff. You can also two-tap enemies with your dead man's tail for a blistering fast time to kill. Basically, you can't go wrong with either option here, just use whatever seems more valuable to you and your team's playstyle. If you're not into Warlock, Hunters and Titans can both do just fine with this build as well. On Titan, you have access to the exotic Lion Ramparts, which basically gives you the benefit of the Warlock's Heat Rises perk but at any time. 
there's a good reason you've probably seen a lot of floating DMT Titans out there in the wild lately. It's a crazy strong synergy. This one isn't subclass specific, so you can use whichever one is your favorite. For Hunter, we don't have access to in-air accuracy with the DMT unfortunately, but I did find pairing Bottom Tree Arc Strider with this loadout to be really powerful. The Arc Bolt Grenade specifically is really amazing for cleaning up enemies who get tagged by your grenade launcher. Typically on Hunter, I was using Stompies for my exotic for the improved mobility, but really any good Hunter exotic works just fine here. As far as mods, here's what I found to be most helpful for all three classes. For your helmet, you want double scout rifle targeting mods to make Deadman's Tail even more oppressive with more aim assist. For the gloves, I was typically using the seasonal scout rifle loader as well as the grenade launcher reloader just in case I needed to force a faster reload than the auto loading perk provided. For your chest, nothing is really that important here since you don't need to aim down sights on either of your weapons too much, so the typical stuff like unflinching mods lose a little bit of value. You can either use some really expensive mods here like charge with light or intellect mods, or maybe just unflinching scout rifle aim just in case you need to aim it for longer range duels once in a while. For your boots, you definitely want double grenade launcher scavenger which can be bought super cheaply from the seasonal artifact. More grenades here are always a good thing because you can freely spam them around corners and take more speculative shots with them. For your class item, you can go with double bomber mods or really anything else that you like here. It's not critical for the build. If possible, I would highly recommend running the mods Taking Charge, High Energy Fire, Powerful Friends, and Radiant Light. This combo will have you and your teammates frequently charged with light so you can deal bonus damage which will net you more one hit kills with your grenade launcher and more two taps with the dead man's tail. So I guess all that's left to answer is the original question, is this combination overpowered? I really think it is. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I just busted up laughing at how easily I was getting kills in Trials of Osiris with this loadout. I won a number of 1v2 situations that I felt I basically had no business winning just because it's so easy to launch a grenade out there and follow up the damage by hip firing your DMT. You can do this with incredibly casual aim, especially thanks to the proximity grenade perk. I also got an insane amount of kills on enemies hiding behind cover. It was so common for my teammates to call out that someone was hurt in cubby or behind some wall and I would just launch a grenade launcher in that direction and get a free kill. Seriously, it was so easy I felt dirty even using it. So do I think there's a skill gap with grenade launchers? Yeah, I actually do. After using them for a while, it was clear to see how some players who have invested a lot of time to master every single angle on a map can be incredibly effective with these things. It's not the same type of a skill gap as perfectly aiming a sniper rifle for a headshot, although let's be honest with the aim assist in Destiny 2, that's not exactly rocket science either. I would say that grenade launchers have a very low skill floor, meaning that with even just a little bit of practice you can start to become incredibly effective with them. They also do have what I would call a medium to high skill ceiling, meaning that if you do spend a lot of time with them you can become so frustrating to play against, but it's not quite the same as facing an aimbot with a sniper rifle. So I guess as a takeaway, you could say that it doesn't really require a lot of skill to do good, but there is a skill gap to make it even more busted. I really do think this is potentially the strongest setup in Destiny 2 PvP right now thanks to the utility of hitting players behind cover so easily and consistently, as well as pairing it with a weapon like Dead Man's Tail that covers essentially every single range. You can lob grenades accurately from nearly sniper rifle distances, and DMT has so much range that you can challenge basically any engagement that a map has to offer. Up close, having proxy nades on your grenade launcher makes hitting close quarter shots super super easy, and you can follow up that damage with an almost instantaneous hit from your dead man's tail to finish off the kill. In a way, it's almost like having a sniper rifle and a shotgun at the same time, but without the harsh ammo economy downsides of that loadout. I think the dead man's tail grenade launcher combo actually has a similar strength to everyone's favorite mountaintop recluse setup from many seasons ago, except that it's more effective at range thanks to dead man's tail, with the trade off of not being quite as much of a slaying setup compared to the charged up recluse. Maybe in a future video I'll talk about some ideas on how to rebalance both of these weapons for PvP. If you're interested in that one, please let me know in a comment. If you'd like to try out another busted PvP build, I'd recommend my Chaos Reach Warlock video which helps you build your super incredibly fast. It's a video on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description. 